Standing by for you, Herbie. Alright, maybe not. Beautiful girls. Alright, so we're gonna carry on here because I think, I'm hoping, this is the easiest way out of here. Although I see a very big log in the way. Whew. I think we're gonna be lucky, Senzo. I think the cub is still also happy to find its mother. Now, they keep walking and stopping, so I'm sure Shadow's a bit tired, I think, even though it doesn't seem to be the worst possible injury, it does take a little bit of strain to walk all the way from wherever she is directing the cub to go get the cub and then come all the way back. So hopefully she'll be taking us to some very nice spot. And there she goes. I'm gonna give it to her for trying so hard, even with the limb. I think Shadow gets a lot a lot of brownie points. And there's a cub running, trotting away. <laughs> Someone's full of energy. I think I hear some hyenas in the distance. As you see, Shadow's just... She also heard it and I think it's quite far, so I wonder if perhaps she is actually not taking us back to a kill, or well, not really us, but the cub. And maybe that hyena just gave her a bit of a warning, because as soon as she heard it, she also stood still raised her head and carried on listening. So there are all sorts of dangers involved, not only in the ones they're feeding on top of the kill, but getting from point A to point B, because they could very well, or she could very well go and get the cub, and by the time she gets back, there are lions or another leopard, or who knows what else around there. All right. Um, are you gonna head to the road? Because if you did, that would be amazing. All right. Let's see around here. Whoop. Whoop. Rex for Ali Rex. I'm by the Misikaya, the old Misikaya. There, you can see them from here. All right, perfect. Now we've managed to direct people in here and then. Oh, somebody's tired, going for a bit of a rest. Are you gonna stay around there for a while, girl? So that we can have another look. So you see, she's still very hot, although like I said, it's a very nice afternoon, and there's a nice breeze, but obviously she's been walking quite a bit. So a lot of panting going on to try and cool herself down, to put her body temperature to a more acceptable level. And then while well, obviously always keeping an eye out on the cub, which I've actually lost in amongst all of this grass and all of this scenery. Ah, the, oh, the cub is eating! They've got a kill! <gasps> yes! Alright. Let's go have a bit of a look. Amazing! Woohoo! It seems like she managed to kill a steambuck. All right, I want to try and get to a point where we're not gonna be too much of a problem. Senzo, can you get them from in front of me? Because I don't wanna disturb them too much, but I wanna make sure that they also get a bit of a view. Um, if you go around here, park there, you'll be able to see them. All right, well, how amazing is this? I think this is proper proof that uh, Shadow has been trying very, very hard and doing a wonderful job because all of her hunting and gallivanting uh, last night actually paid off because she did manage to make a kill. It seems to be a steambug by the looks of it. So even if it's a small antelope, it's good for her. I think she's a bit upset now. What is... Yes, it does seem like a little steambug and this little cub is definitely very happy to be feeding upon upon the kill. How beautiful is this? My goodness, Shadow. So many brownie points for you. You've done a very wonderful job. Now, I think I'm gonna switch my radio off considering that I've got very capable people <laughs> around me. <laughs> Just so that there's a little bit less voices in my head. Hello. So actually, no wonder she lay down and she was so happy here. And I'm all very happy for your vantage point, Senzo, because otherwise <laughs> I think maybe we would have driven a bit too close to the kill. Because we obviously want to give them 
a bit of space so that they don't feel uncomfortable with us and they're happy about it. I think Shadow's probably very tired and I, it doesn't seem like there's been a lot that's been eating. By the looks of it, she's just taken a lot of the hair out, perhaps maybe opened it around, but lots and lots of food. And for this tiny little cub, it's still quite a very nice big meal. So you see now she's tilted her head using her back teeth uh, as a scissor to try and open up the kill and get to the meaty part. Well, I think mom's helped you. And Elle, you're wondering when will the cub get a name? Where normally cubs get their names uh, when they're about a year old, just to make sure that they, <laughs> they um, have been around for long enough. But uh, it depends also whoever it is that you ask, because a lot of people prefer to name the cubs after. Or there's a lot of, um, how can I call it, superstition among some of the rangers that they prefer just to call them after they become independent, or so not to jinx them. But I would assume that she would just get a name when she's about a year old, just to make sure that everything's fine and that she's actually survived probably what is or could be the toughest year of her life, which is actually also the first one. That's beautiful. Suze, you were saying that the cub needs to eat up before the hyenas come and take it away. Well, it is quite funny now that, that we know that there was a kill here. No wonder why Shadow stopped a little bit before we got here and then she started hearing around. Also likely she knew that the kill was here already, clearly, which we didn't. But she just stops and takes a moment to listen and I'm sure the cub went off trotting about because it could already smell it. So it just proves that how much more enhanced their senses are when compared to ours. They can see, they can smell, they can hear a lot of things that we don't. Which always makes me feel like a bit of a subspecies. <laughs> and them like the real powerful creatures around on the planet. I am so happy that she's actually eating. I don't think we could I could have expected anything better on the first day back. I'm actually so happy to see Shadow. I said to Tristan, I was like, oh, I would really like to see Shadow and the cub. Woohoo! Hopefully. She'll be able to have this kill around here. Not too many, well, Shadow is not really known for hoisting or putting her kills up on trees. And it's a relatively small kill for what it could be. Oh, now the cub is not too happy, mom's getting up. Is maybe mom gonna come and have a bite? Pride cat mama, you're wondering how the cats remember where they left their kill. Well, animals have very good memories. Perhaps uh, we all know about how wonderful and how amazing the elephant's memory is. So they are probably the ones that have, or most studies have been done, but they can all remember. It's not like they do something and they don't remember what they've done of who they've seen or where they've grown up or anything like it. So I'm sure she roughly knew, likely she didn't know the exact tree where she left it down, but she roughly knew, well, I left it somewhere around here. So once she gets closer to the area, she'll be able to pick it up by smell or even by sight. And even if it's hitting and we cannot see it properly, their vision is slightly different from us. It's more, um, it's able to pick up more detail than what we do. So maybe something that's odd and obviously ones that you know that what you're looking for, it's a bit easier to find it out there in the bush. And I think the cub though, he found it by smell because once we got here it was just so happy and it trotted off and I was, thought maybe it was playing with something but obviously <laughs> food was there. So that is the best thing that could have happened to it and now she is busy being a little glutton and she's going to eat it all until her belly is very fat and round and she cannot walk. <laughs> or at least I hope that's what they do. Because it's very nice seeing that she's actually doing so well. Now, if you see around the patches of the stem book, you can see there are some patches where the hair is missing. So that was probably Shadow, or well, not probably, very likely Shadow, just taking some of the hair out, just to try and to get to the actual skin so that she can get start, um, start trying to, to cut up the skin and then get to the meat that's underneath. And I think what happened is because she spent so much energy um, hunting and stalking and trying to bring this animal down, because stem bugs are very, very fast little creatures, so I don't think it was easy for her. I'm sure she had to be very patient to try and get to this little one, little antelope as uh, to get as close as possible to then pounce on it and then get it. 
So I'm sure that after making the kill, she rested for a bit, but she also fed off it for a little while because we can see where the cub is feeding. Clearly, this has not all been made by her in the time that we've been here. So I'm sure Shadow also had a bit of a bite. And now she's gone. She's fetched the cub. She's brought it back. And uh, now they're busy eating. I do wonder though how far into little Gowrie they were because they were quite thirsty. <laughs> and now Shadow's quite tired. <laughs> the hardships of being a mom. <laughs> Richie, you're wondering at what age do the cubs become independent? Well, roughly for leopards it can be around from a year and a half to two. I've even seen sometimes where they hang around their mothers until they're about three. So it's I think it's fairly area and personality dependent. Some mothers kick them out earlier, some cubs are independent a little bit earlier, but roughly I would say two years is a good average, a year and a half, two years. Uh, anything that's a little bit less than that, that forces um, cubs into independency, like for example the disappearance of Karula and Hosanna and Shungile having to, to fend for themselves from a young age. And sometimes you get, funny enough, I've seen them mostly with male uh, leopard cubs where they hang around their mothers for quite a long time, even after she's had her, her litter following that particular one. And they always seem to be very hungry and they always come for the kills. I think maybe they just really want to get an easy meal. Can't really blame them. But yeah, about two years. So this little one still has got quite a long time, but even at this age, when the mother leaves her for long periods of time, all of her instincts are there. So she'll start hunting perhaps tortoises or following squirrels or mongoose. So it, she's already, I wouldn't be surprised if she's already managed to make a small kills of, of her own. I have seen them at such a young age following mongoose and obviously they're they're not su successful most times like more often than not they will just be spotted or the animals will fly away or come attacking them and mobbing them but they do have it in them to start trying from a very young age and the more they do it obviously the more they're going to perfect their hunting skills and that's what's going to allow them eventually to to become independent leopards well, i think it's funny it's just it hasn't been that long but in two months we've seen what a difference it's done to this particular cub. Kristen, you're wondering if the cub is big enough to try and hoist kills up trees. Well, I don't think it would have the experience or the, the skills more than the strength at this particular age to put it up on a tree. So I think this little one is still, <laughs> if it's something small like a mongoose or perhaps a bird or a squirrel, very likely it's, if it, especially if it's seen its mom do it, then they'll, they'll try their luck and they'll try to do it. But I think in this case, what we're looking at this particular steambook, it will be definitely too big. There are no easy trees where I can see where she, where a cub would be able to hoist in. Um, huh, maybe Shadow is also going to come for a bite. So I think practice makes perfect. She is still a little bit young to be able to do that, but with smaller things, yeah, why not? I'm sure she would be able to put a, a squirrel up a tree. Now there's a bit of aggression there. She doesn't want to share her kill with mom. Look at all that hissing. Shadow, what you doing? I think she wants to eat. <laughs> Seems like Taylor has found one of my ultimate favorite animals in all of Africa. So let's go over to her and find out what beautiful creature she's found while Shadow and the cub decide what they want to do.